Facebook's audit director and marketing leads are former Pfizer directors. Well, what do you say? What do you say? Color me shocked. Okay. Facebook, a platform that routinely censors posts critical of COVID-19 vaccines, has hired several alumni from Pfizer's marketing and internal audit teams to lead similar efforts at the social media platform, the National Pulse can reveal. The hires appear to present a conflict of interest. You don't say. You don't say. For the social media platform, which has come under fire for censoring and banning users who've posted about the side effects or question the efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines. Now, who are these people, you ask? Well, let's look. Facebook's internal audit director, for example, was formerly a senior director at Pfizer. The employee, Tiffany Stokes, has held the influential position at Facebook since January 2020. Oh, that timing. Hmm, that's interesting. Prior to joining Facebook, Stokes worked at COVID-19 vaccine maker Pfizer for five years as the senior director of its finance and legal operations. Interesting. The National Pulse can also reveal that a Facebook vice president for global clients and categories was formerly Pfizer's chief marketing officer for consumer health care in the U.S. That employee, Brian Groves, worked at Pfizer for a total of 14 years, not a short time, before joining Facebook as a director of its global accounts. And similarly, it goes on. A former director for digital marketing and innovation at Pfizer joined Facebook as a client partner for its global marketing solutions branch in 2018. In addition, it goes on and on. You should read the article. You should read the article. It's called Facebook's audit director and marketing leads are former Pfizer directors. It's at the National Pulse. It's worth a read. Now, hmm, I thought about this for a second. I got a little twisted. I'm not going to lie because I knew a lot of people who went and got the vaccine in good faith. They, they made that decision with their doctors or with themselves, decided, and had a bad reaction. It happens. People have bad reactions to all kinds of pharma drugs. It's not exclusive to the vaccines. The difference with the vaccines is the liability protection. That's the difference because it comes under the emergency use authorization. We talked about that yesterday. But they had a bad reaction, whatever it was, some mild, some severe. I have friends that, I have one friend that got myocarditis, had to be on blood thinners, all types of medication. I had a friend that had a stroke. We have a family member that got very sick, has some neurological problems that they've been battling. These things happen. It's a drug company. All of a sudden, we can't call out a drug company and say, hey, just a question, what's going on? These people simply went on Facebook and said, hey, they were scared. They were looking for some type of community, some type of information. You know why? Because they went to their doctor and they got a lot of, I don't know. It's a new tech. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it could be linked. I, don't, I, guess, I don't know. I haven't seen this before. No, you haven't seen it before because it's a new experimental vaccine and we don't know, right? So these people were just looking for community. They were like, can somebody help me? Can you, do you know anyone who's had this? I'm going to the doctor. I'm not getting answers. I don't know what to do. They were lost. They were scared. They were confused. That's what people do, right? Think about yourself as a human being. You get confused. Something's going on with your health. We all know that if your health is jeopardized, nothing else matters, right? You can't think. You can't focus. You're just worried. You get on the internet. You start looking. We all have this chip. Maybe not my dad. My dad's like, oh, I'm on fire. It'll cool down. Seriously, Tony, you got a gift. That's all I'm going to say. But most people go on the internet. They look and they try to find information, so people were use, utilizing Facebook for that. There were also people who had questions about the vaccine when it came out, who were questioning the mandates, who were calling out the fact that it wasn't designed to prevent transmission. They were coming in with facts. I can't tell you how many people got silenced, censored, deplatformed for just asking questions and just pointing out realities. Scientists were on there. Doctors were on there. People were on there who were saying, I can't. I can't authorize this for this patient. I can. Doctors would come in and say, I can authorize it for these, but not this one. Wh why are you telling me I have to? They were uncomfortable. <laughs> well, they spoke too much. <laughs> Censored. Got to get him off. So a lot of this was going on. A lot of people saw this going on and they were like, what, 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 what's happening here? And now we find out that Facebook, Facebook and Pfizer have a little bit of a, of a relationship going on. They're more than friends, let's say it that way. They're more than friends. You know, when you were like going out with somebody, you were like, well, we're not boyfriend. We're more than friends. That's what's going on here, more than friends. Okay? So I think people are awake now in many ways. There's a lot of collusion 
that's gone on. And it's prevented people from getting accurate information, A. It's prevented people from being able to just speak their minds, B. It's prevented people who have suffered at the hands of a big pharma drug or whatever from just feeling like they can talk, they can ask questions. A lot of this is just asking questions. Remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm not your doctor. But I'm a person living in the world, seeing what I see and asking questions. When did that become a bad thing? Well, it became a bad thing because thinking people are a problem for the misinformation police. The misinformation police. Always. So I think you need to be aware and and on high alert to, to what's going on with this collusion. With Silicon Valley, you got Facebook, you got Twitter, you got Big Pharma, you got oftentimes big government machines, Democrat establishment machines are locked in there. You got the CDC. We saw the CDC and the teachers unions working together on talking points about school openings. Those decisions weren't being made for your kids' health. They were political decisions. We know that now. The proof is in the emails that were disclosed about the collusion. You want to learn a little bit. Then people say, well, the FDA, huh? watch Dope Sick. Watch Dope Sick. Watch it. There is a revolving door between people who work for the FDA People who work for Big Pharma, people who work for the CDC, people who work for Big Pharma, very often times that compromises the ability of these people to do an honest job. I remember Scott Gottlieb going on TV. He's a Big Pharma guy. Um, he, he's on the Pfizer board. He would be going on cable news, talking about the vaccine, giving advice about the vaccine. I, you know, At the time I had cable. I don't have cable anymore. Thank heavens. But I had it at the time and I would see and I'd be like, why aren't they disclosing that he, he works, for, he's on Pfizer board? Maybe that's a conflict of interest just in terms of the type of advice you may be putting out there. Well, he was on networks that were getting a ton of money from Big Pharma. Do you see what's going on here? There has never been a more important time for you to become your own citizen journalist. You need to do your research. When it comes to your health, your family, your body, do your own research gather it. You have a team of trusted doctors that have been through, you know, good times and bad times with you. Talk to them. If you can't ask them a question, think about that relationship. Think about what's going on there. If you like the short clip, you can catch another one here or you can catch the full episode right here.